Mr. Eddie, would you get me a glass of water, please? I'm awful thirsty. Uh, from the refrigerator, Mr. Eddie, please. Water's a bit more tasty. Bad. I think you ought to have a nurse. Oh, no, I, uh, I have Mr. Eddie. I'll be all right. Mr. Eddie. Oh, come on. I can still get around, and, and he's very helpful. He can't even make a telephone call. Telephone? <laughs> Who are you kidding? Next time, we won't need a telephone. Betty, you need rest. Now, you should be in the hospital. No hospital. I'll die in my own house, on my feet, making dinner, dusting the table. No hospital. Oh, I, I'm getting on. How long can you expect? You need rest, rest, rest. I don't do anything strenuous. And Mr. Eddie is very strong. He's not the sharpest, but he's very strong. Say, do you know what he can do? He can make an egg scrambled. Betty. Mm, tastes good, too. Sometimes he puts on too much salt, but I eat it anyway. And he's so proud. Mr. Eddie is a very proud man. Mrs. Herzig. There's not much time. He uh, has a big collection of comic books. Likes to look at the pictures, trades the boy next door. Did you by any chance hear anything I said? <sighs> Superheroes. I try to get him to like Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig, but no. Superheroes. <laughs> the Hulk. The Hulk. Nobody takes care of the Hulk in comic books. Big, ugly fellow. Sometimes I read the words to him. He likes that. What's going to happen to Mr. Eddy? I'll uh, work out something. He's a very proud man. Want me to make some inquiries? He's lived here with me for such a long time. He, he doesn't have anybody. I'll make some inquiries. Likes to ride on the bus, looks at the people, sees them going here, going there, never says anything. I can't imagine what's going on in his head. It's like God gave him the present of a brain in a box, and he stuffed the box with cotton so as the brain wouldn't get damaged. And Mr. Eddie is using the brain, but he hasn't taken it out of the box. All those years. I got the cover off the box. Betty Herzig, you're a good woman. Oh, you do what you can do. You have a son, don't you? Mm. Owns a rug store, East Orange, New Jersey. Two nice kids. We talk on the phone now and then. Call last week, in fact. Uh, sends me pictures of them and the children. What with Mr. Eddie, I don't get much chance to visit, and... And then with Josh and Edna always in school. I think you'll let them know how things are. Oh. Maybe you could stay with them. What a... Oh, thank you, Mr. Eddie. Oh, thank you. Oh, my. That is nice and cold. Did you spill any? No. Ah, oh, that's a good boy. Will you see the doctor to the door? I'll make some inquiries. Call you tonight. Thanks for coming so promptly. Right. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Where can we find God? In outer space, beyond the stars? At the top of a mountain in some ivory tower? At the end of a microscope as we peer into the inner recesses of the atom? Or do we find God in people, in the depths of ourselves, in those around us? God is the father of the human family. He inhabits the depths of each one of his children. And he's most fully present in those who have the greatest needs and who feel the most intense pain. When we reach out in love to those around us, 
when we share their pain and shoulder their burden, we meet God in them, and together we experience his love. He who abides in love, St. John says, abides in God and God in him. <laughs> Public School 35. <laughs> Larry Herzig, you got your eyes closed. Don't you like to have your picture taken? Eyes closed. Picture? Yeah, yeah, yes, Mr. Eddie, it's a, it's a school picture. You want to see? Yeah. <laughs> well, bring the chair over and we'll look, huh? Why? <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Eddie. <laughs> There, you see, it's my son when he was a little boy. Uh, the one with his eyes closed. Uh. <laughs> it's a class picture taken a long time ago. My, he was a nice little boy. He, uh, he liked the comic books just like you, Miss Trey. Uh. Mm -hmm. Bugs Bunny. Uh, he used to read Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig. Uh, the Hulk? No, I don't think they had the Hulk then. Oh. <laughs> Oh, <clears throat> did, did you feed the bird, Jimmy the bird? Did you feed him? Uh, water. Water, good, and, and seed. Huh? Seed. <laughs> can't let Jimmy go. No, can't let Jimmy go. He couldn't find food. No. No. Too used to your feeding. Yeah. Too used to being taken care of. Yeah. Just like you, Mr. Eddie. I can take care of myself. Mm. Did you make your bed this morning? Yeah. Good boy. How about breakfast? Uh, no eggs. Oh. <laughs> How about toast, milk? No salad. <laughs> you have to eat something. No eggs. Call the store. Call the store. Yes. Yes, Mr. Eddie, but, but suppose I wasn't here. Let's pretend that I wasn't here, huh? You're here, Costa. Mr. Reddy, you're not a bird, not like Jimmy. This room is not a cage. The store is just down the block, and the money's in the jar. You know where the money is, don't you? No, I don't go to store. But you like going out, seeing the people, all your friends on the block. See the boy next door. Maybe you could trade him your new comic book. And the new one, the one we finished yesterday. Mr. Eddie, you're not listening to me. Come on, I'll call the store. Get the eggs. I'll make them. Not too much salt. <laughs> Want a cashew? <laughs> Friends, 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 we will all. Mr. Eddie, dear, what am I going to do with you? Read the Hulk. We read the Hulk yesterday. Again, the Hulk. All right, but then we have breakfast, and you make the toast. Read. <laughs> Read. All right, now let's see. Ah. There are the cooks are coming out, out of the bank. See, see that dumb monster? <laughs> that, that ought to bring the Hulk. And and uh, there's the Hulk. Ah. Yeah. The big boob, that one says. Uh, and then he aims the gun and he blasts him. Ooh. L look at that picture. <laughs> Ooh, the Hulk looks surprised. I, th I think he's hurt. Yes. Now, Mr. Eddie, I can't see the book. If you put your hands... No more. No more reading. All right.
complete slave. Will you do anything I want you to do? I'll pay you back. I'll make you happy. Great pleasure will be your just reward for absolute subservience. I'm the same uninhibited, finely attuned, impetuous woman you married. Just tell me everything I want, no matter what is mine for the asking. If silence is golden, why aren't I rich? <laughs> Crazy driver. Well, it's a start. Mm. Your mother's a wonderful woman, Larry. She's totally unselfish in her desire to help a small segment of humanity. She built a silk cocoon around herself and Mr. Eddie. She's got barely enough for herself with your father's pension and social security and a few bucks in the bank. If I never saw her again, I wouldn't care. Furthermore, rather than step into her home, I would, upon your least indication, open the door of this car that's traveling a approximately 64 miles an hour and fall upon the ever-disappearing road be crushed by the 20-ton truck that is bearing hard on your rear right left. Truck. She's an old woman. Perhaps she's dying. Perhaps even as we sit here chattering happily on upon the relevant topics of the day, she's already dead. We could tell the children that Mr. Eddie choked her to death, as was only to be expected from a lunatic or that he rose up and smote her with a comic book while she was trying to brush his teeth. In which case, upon our arrival, we would only have to arrange for a cremation, deposit Mr. Eddie in the nearest insane asylum, and leave. At last, justifying the useless, draining life of a hopeless hunk of humanity named Mr. Eddie. Is that his first name or his last name? Oh, never mind. It doesn't Shut matter. Shut up! You. Pithy. Now, now, let me see. Oh, wonderful. You make such a handsome-looking waiter, Mr. Eddie. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, uh, yes, but you always have to serve from the left. I I'll raise my left hand whenever you come to the table so you remember the side. Mr. Eddie, remember. Huh? We'll uh, have the soup first. Larry likes soup. Put him in a good mood. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I want you to make the very best impression, uh, Mr. Eddie. Oh, what have you got in your pocket? Oh, Mr. Eddie, no comic books tonight. Waiters don't carry comic books. Uh, you have to concentrate. I want you to get everything just right. I want Sybil to see how good a waiter you are, how useful you are. Maybe she'll even give you a job. Oh, wouldn't you like that? To uh, be a butler, maybe, huh? Uh, Mr. Eddie, stay home with you. No work. No work? Oh, why not? You have such good hands. You could earn some money. No, no. Oh, now, Mr. Eddie, don't make believe with me. I know you want to work and make some money. Of course you could. You, uh... You saw the doctor here the other day. Well, I need medicine. That costs money. Well, anyway, I have this idea. I could send you to live with my son. Well, for a while. They have two children, and they must need some help. And then you could earn money because they would pay you, and then you'd bring the money back to me and... Make your money. What am I doing? You don't even know what I'm talking about. Oh, no. Oh, no, Mr. Eddie, not. No, don't cry. No, no, I, I didn't mean to frighten you. No, no. Money. I have money. I have got to give you money. What money, Mr. Eddie? What are you talking about? Money for my room. Mr. Well, I'll be
was expecting Mr. Reddy. Oh? Can I come in? Oh, sure. Uh, I, I was just setting the table. Betty, how do you do it? Why aren't you in bed? Well, I'm expecting company. Then call them up and tell them some other time. What's the matter with you? It's too late. They're on their way. Got a long trip. Betty. I gotta work fast. I got a bird in a cage here. Gotta let him go. Betty, if you're talking about Mr. Reddy, I've made some inquiries. I've found something. You're gonna get a call. No. No, he, he, he couldn't take it. Oh, look, this is the only place he knows. He doesn't remember anything. N no life, nothing. Just today and, and what comes tomorrow. And if he goes to a, a home, an institution, and they, they don't know what he's been doing all of these years, and they don't remind him, then it's like he never lived at all. The cover on the box gets closed. And he's just the same as Ed. Betty, you're going to have to face this. Oh, no, this. I, I, I know. I'm going to die, and I have to do something. So, I, I've invited my, my son and his wife to dinner tonight, and Mr. Eddie is going to serve them. And they're going to see how efficient he is and how good to have around. And then, oh, I don't know. I never asked anybody for anything before, especially Larry. His wife, I, I don't even know her, but Mr. Eddie. Mr. Eddie is my friend. He has a right to live, and I've got to help him. Uh, <laughs> money for medicine. Mr. Eddie, where'd you... That's ten dollars. Where did you get it? Mother. Mother gave it for a room. That was a long time ago. You never told me. I'm sorry. For medicine. Sick. Take care. Good hands. Save from the left. Betty. Thank you, Mr. Eddie. I just don't know what I would do without you. <laughs> That's so thoughtful. <laughs> Good night, Doctor. You see, there's nothing to worry about. I have Mr. Eddie. Betty, you're gonna get a call. There's nothing else, there's no one. A welfare institution is better than the street. The man's name is Solomon. It'll be all right, you'll see. Soloway. She doesn't know her grandchildren, and they know her by name. That's your fault. Well, you don't expect me to bring them to this place, do you? I mean, would you expose your children to Mr. Eddie? Well, would you? And heaven forbid she should leave him to visit us. But of course, how could she? Then who would take care of Mr. Eddie? He can cook an egg. Can you beat that? What, is that supposed to be some kind of a joke? Egg, beat that. <laughs> no, of course not. You don't make jokes, not even bad ones. Even God makes jokes. God made Mr. Eddie. But not you. You don't make jokes. You make rugs. I sell rugs. Oh, is that a rise? Do I sense a rise? I sell rugs. Are you trying to make some kind of a point? My mother keeps a picture of me by her bed. It's uh, an old snapshot of when I was a little kid. She's got maybe five, six pictures of me all together. My own mother don't know me at all. Uh, I've seen my mother maybe five times in the last six years, but baby, she knows I sell rugs. Every rug in our house I put on the floor. Every rug in my mother's house I put on the floor. Your sister's rugs, your friend's rugs. We've been married 16 years and you don't know I sell rugs. So you got nothing to say? Larry, you covered everything. I wish I could have gotten something for the children. Well, forget it, Ma. But uh, it's kind of hard for me getting out of the house. Forget it, Ma. 
Maybe before you go home, you could go to a store and buy something for them and tell them it's from their grandma. Sure. Forget it, Mom. I really haven't been up to snuff. Yeah. What did the doctor say? Uh, nothing. Same thing. Take your pills. Rest. What? With Mr. Eddie, I get a lot of rest. <laughs> Is um, it always this slow? That's all right, Mr. Eddie. Uh, just to pick up the ladle and, and wash it before you serve the soup. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Eddie is such a help. I, I, I don't know what I would do without him. He, he's so efficient and, and he's so kind. He brings me water for my pills. <laughs> and he takes care of himself beautifully, don't you, Mr. Eddie? I uh, make my bed. Yes, he does, and very well, too. And uh, he takes care of his own room, and he washes himself. Swell, Ma. You did a good job with him. Bravo for Mr. Eddie. <laughs> is that his first name or his last name? Eddie is his first name, Sybil. Mm. Eddie Kornreich. Oh, he's German. <laughs> no, he's Jewish. Oh, he's such good company. And you can see how gentle he is, how sensitive. He knows whenever I'm not feeling just right, and he's always there to do the little things. You ever think about putting him away someplace? No, I, I never have, Larry. Well, we got places for guys like him, you know. Mr. Eddie wouldn't enjoy that, Larry, and he's actually quite self-sufficient. Oh, Ma. And selfishly, son. He's really very good for your own mother. He has been a drain on you, Betty. I mean, naturally, it's not his fault, and... Uh, I don't blame the poor thing. But since Dad died, where have you been? Simple. And how long has it been since you've seen Josh and Edna, Mother? After all, they are your grandchildren, and they have a right to see their grandmother. Pictures aren't enough. I'm an old lady. You could have brought them here sometimes. Here? With him? Mr. Eddie is wonderful with children. Why, why the boy next door comes here by the hour and reads with him. Doesn't he, Mr. Eddie? Yeah. They're such good friends. Well, I think you're taking an awful chance. Chance? Shush. Wait, wait, Mr. Eddie. Sybil, Mr. Eddie is the warmest human being I've ever met. If it hadn't been for him all these years, I don't know what I would have done. We would have lived a normal life. Now, Larry is right, Betty. Why don't you find a nice place for Mr. Eddie and get out of this place? Well, that's right. I mean, God, it's so depressing here. You can move in with us. Yeah, it's swell. You see, you got a heart after all, oh, honey. Shut up, Larry. I mean, we could fix a nice little place for you. Uh, naturally, it wouldn't be forever. And uh, you would get reacquainted with Josh and Edna. What's that? What are you doing now? Oh, it, it, it's just a reminder for Mr. Eddie to, to serve from the left. <laughs> He doesn't know his right hand from his left hand, does he? Uh, uh, serve Sybil first, dear. Oh, no, that's all. <laughs> Good night. Oh, Mr. Eddie. Did you finish cleaning up? Yes. Are you ready for bed? I'm not tired. Oh. Come over here and I'll brush your hair. Well, Mr. Eddie can brush hair. Well, of course you can, but I like to brush your hair. You have such nice, soft hair. See, I I've got the brush right here. Come on. Come on. And sit on the bed. <laughs> It'll soothe your nerves. <sighs> it was a bad day for you, wasn't it, Mr. Eddie? Mr. Eddie dropped the soup. Could have happened to anyone. Good hands. You said I had good hands. You have wonderful hands, so strong, so steady. And I dropped the soup. I thought Sybil said bad things. Yes, she behaved very badly. I know she hurt your feelings. Hurt my feelings. Well, 
I would have dropped something, too, if she'd said those silly things about me. Mad. Were you, Mr. Eddie? I never knew you to be mad at anybody before. Uh, she was. She said yes, yes, that. Yes, that's, that's all right. Just forget it. You don't ever have to see her again. <laughs> you know, some people just don't understand. Hurt my feelings. Some people don't know a nice person when they see one. She doesn't know what a good friend you are, how kind, how gentle. Love you. Do you, Mr. Eddie? Well, now that... That's about the nicest thing I've ever heard said. That makes me real proud. <laughs> I'll take care of you. You take care of me. Tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Yes, Mr. Eddie, but... And I'll make eggs, not too much salt. <laughs> and you can read the Hulk, just like always. We'll be together just as long as we can. Just as long as we can, I promise. And uh, maybe we can ride the bus and sure. see the people. Yeah. Telephone. Well, I don't feel up to answering it. Mr. Eddie can answer. No, I don't, Mr. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. It's uh, Mr. Soloway. Mm. Hello, Mr. Soloway. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, my doctor told me you were going to call. Yes. That was Mr. Eddie. Yes. That was dear Mr. Eddie. Insight is a production 